So hello, everybody. First of all, I want to thank the organizers for inviting me to that virtual meeting. And the topic of my talk is beating heart mitral valve surgery, which I modified a little bit to beating heart mitral valve interventions and the echo perspective, because all the beating heart valve surgeries or interventions are performed within a heart team, enclosing cardiac surgeon, cardiologists, anesthesiologists, as well as images. So I have some disclosures to my talk. First of all, we are reference customer of Philips, and I receive speaker honoraries from Edwards Life Sciences, Abbott, and Medela. Unfortunately, not on my personal account, but on the research account from the hospital. So when we talk about uh, beating heart procedures or interventions, we have transcatheter mitral valve repair options. And there are a lot of options addressing coaptation devices, analoplasty devices, caudal repair devices, and LV remodeling devices. And due to the time restriction, I only talk about a transeptal approach with the mitral clip and the Pascal system with the coaptation devices and a transapical approach for cordial repair devices using the neocords. Harpoon I will mention, but will not demonstrate the echo images for that. And then we have the transcathedral mitral valve replacement therapies, which so far are not only under clinical investigation. So they are not ready to use for everyone. And I will show in my last slides the echo images for placing the 10 line valve. So, in short, the agenda would be transcatheter mitral valve edge to edge repair, transcatheter caudal repair, transcatheter valve in valve or valve in ring, the lampoon technique, and as I said before, the transcatheter mitral valve replacement. Starting with the edge to edge repair. You see that it mimics the Alfieri approach, uh, which was first done surgically by Ottavio Alfieri. And you see with the clip, you attach the anterior mitral leaflet and the posterior mitral leaflet. So um, doing a double orifice valve opening area after the inter uh, intervention. For that, as I said, there are two devices on the market, which are CE approved. One from Abbott, the mitral clip, which is here for years, and the other one from Pascal from Edwards Life Science. Here you see the devices, and there are some, some differences, but not as much. So for the echo procedure, there's not so much different. Both of the devices have now independently grippers. So that means that you can grip either both leaflets at the same time, or you can grip it independently. And for these procedures, you need the transeptical approach. And that is the first crucial thing with echo guidance. So the guidance to the septal puncture can be done using X-plane technique, starting from the mid-esophageal AV short axis plane, as you should see that here, where you have the LVOT or the aortic valve, here, the anterior direction, then the posterior direction. And if you use the explain, you have the bicaval view, where you have the superior vena cava and the inferior cava. And the transeptal puncture side is very crucial because you should puncture the septum that so that the device or the guide runs into the left atrium along the coaptation line of the mitral leaflet. And the height should be enough so that uh, the device by introducing into left ventricle won't touch or won't be captured in the cords. If it's too small a height or if it's too high that it's not possible to grasp the leaflets. So that is really a very crucial thing. So you can also start from the bicaval view, which you see here, but then Remember that if your, your bicaval view uh, is like in this patient, more than 90 degrees, then the corresponding right side will be four degrees. That means you will have here a mirror image, seeing 
the anterior part and the posterior part in the mirror image means that, that is the aortic valve, that is anterior position, that is posterior position. We have to have in mind that. You can invert that on the echo machine in order to get uh, the other orientation with anterior valve here and posterior position there. So then you, the interventionalist point to the septum to cause a so-called top-down V-sign. You see that here, once again, here you have the bicable view modified and you see with the trackball of your explain device, you see the tenting of the interatrial septum, which can be verified also in 3D. You see that here, the tenting, the view from the left atrium side. So the uh, guide wire hasn't passed the septum yet. And then you measure from that position, from that tenting position, the distance to the mitral valve analysis in the four gender view, which should be around four to five centimeters for the reasons I talked about that before. And then you have that wire once again here in the running movie, here the anterior position, posterior position, superior, inferior. And when the wire has passed the septum and it's in the left atrium, it should be positioned into the left upper pulmonary vein in order not to cause damage of the left atrium. Then the introducer guide is introduced and you see that here also with the explain that the guide touches the septum here and as long as the guide isn't through the left atrium you will have that tenting and as you see have seen it yet now that the, the guide is advancing into the left atrium, that tending is removed completely. See that here. Right. Now, the second. Check. Now the tending isn't there anymore. So then once again, you can check if your position is good. And then the delivery sheet is introduced through that guide. You see here that knob, which um, is the end of your introducer guide. And then you have the device here, and then it is steered to the mitral valve, either in 3D, or you can also use the 2D, seeing here the septum, and then the steering down, that is the left atrial uh, upper pulmonary ravine, and then steering down to the mitral valve position. Once we have that, so the device in, still in the left atrium, then you control the grippers or the clasps. And you see here the clasp or the grippers going down for the posterior mitral leaflet. And you can see it in a second also for the anterior mitral leaflet. So that the interventionalist has the orientation uh, that the clasps and the grippers are moving correctly. And here you see that for the anterior mitral leaflet. So then it comes to the alignment, correct alignment of the, from the device to the leaflet or the clocking. And you see it's like a clock, 12 clock in the upper position where the aortic valve is, then 369. And then the interventionist can do a rotation of that clip clockwise or anti-clockwise in order to get a correct alignment. After that, the clip is introduced in the ventricle. And you see then also again using explain the final positioning where you want to have it. So you should discuss the strategy beforehand. And, and then you can confirm it again with color Doppler so that you are really sure that your clip will fix the mitral regurgitation essential. After that, it comes to the grasping or the capture, and you see that here. And we recommend to record all that grasping retrospectively, because then you can see here with closing of the clip or the Pascal device, the increased tension of the leaflets. And you can repeat it in order if there's any question, if you haven't 
captured the, the leaflets correctly or enough. You should look for a leaflet insertion of about five millimeters. So with still the device connected in 3D, you can see if the orientation is fine. If you decrease the gain, you can see the clip or the Pascal device in the left ventricle. Here, the anterior mitral leaf with the posterior mitral leaflet before you do the release. And it also, you can use explain as you can see it here with the device still connected play with the trackball with the cursor in order to ensure that you see both leaflets running into that clip or in the device at the same height and that you have a stable leaflet tissue and limited mobility of the, both leaflets and then you can deliver that as you can see that here and then everything is fine the clip is stable you see that here both leaflets are running into that that is fine and then you ensure the white tissue bridge, either from the left atrial side or from the left ventricular side. And then you look at residual MR or, of course, at mitral stenosis. The gradation, I won't, to, I won't go into that because you had lectures beforehand. The next device I want to discuss is the caudal repair device with the transcendental approach. So there are two devices. I have added the YouTube address. Uh, down here where you can see videos of those bo both uh, devices and it's the neocord with the transapical approach where the device captured the uh, DC segment of the leaflet then neocords are inserted through that leaflet and the neocords then are pulled out from the heart and are fixed uh, on the apex of the heart with that tension necessary to relieve the, the prolapse. The same with the harpoon device, it's the same technique more or less, transapical approach. But that device, you won't capture the leaflet, but that device is attached from the left ventricular side to the prolapsing part, and then a needle comes out and fix the caudal uh, the new cords, and then again, it's pulled out of the heart, and then depending on the tension, you can fix that and fix the prolapse. Here you have the echo, where first the transapical puncture site is there using the mitral commerce rule and the corresponding long axis with the orientation here. Then you see the device coming through, and then it is advanced to the uh, left atrium, and here you see the new core positioning in 3D. That is the prolapse here. And you can correct on 3D the proper alignment of that new core device. So after having that, you see that device here, open the new core device with the posterior mitral leaflet up here on the lower grass. Then it's fixed, and then you can control the tension. Here you see again in 3D echo, that prolapse. Here you see the, the new cord there, but the loop is too loose. You see the prolapse here. And here with more tension on the loop, the prolapse will be pulled down where it is fixed. You can also control it on explain with color. Here you see the loop is too tight where you have the anterior mitral leaflet coming over the mitral annulus and you see an eccentric jet and here with less tension that is a perfect sign no regurg at all and here for comparison the prolapse here with the mitral regurgitation and now with a fixed new cord no regurgitation at all just a small minor one on the anterior lateral commissure the next technique, what we talk about is the transapical valve and valve technique. You should beforehand look for contraindications like narrow LVOT, bioprosthetic, uh, bioprosthetic uh, mismatch, and thrombus or atrial septum defect repair, something which would be a contraindication for transeptal valve and valve. And then you have the transeptal approach like 
I've described that before, but you need a balloon valvular di dilatation, which of course cannot really be ensured on, on fluoroscopy, like you can see that here, if, if the balloon is really uh, enlarging your transeptal puncture site. And then to be honest, the positioning of the device is more reliable on fluoroscopy from the interventionalist than with 3D positioning. And after the deployment, you see here, that was the former valve here, former ring. And this is the implanted sapien valve with a very nice result on that. Of course, you have to ensure if there's no leaflet obstruction, you use the transgastric long axis view where you see here the implanted valve left ventricle and the aortic valve, and you see on color that there is no flow acceleration. And of course you measure the gradient in order to be ensure that there is no leaflet obstruction. But what happens in patients where you have a long anterior mitral leaflet? For those, you need a different technique because you see, the, can imagine here, if you implant here a sapien valve, that anterior mitral leaflet will be pushed into the LVOT and causes a LVOT obstruction. For that, you can use the lampoon procedure, which again, here is the YouTube link, was described by Kahn and colleagues, where you use two catheters, which are inserted through a ins uh, incision in the groin, and you go retrograde and anterograde, and you have here the anterior mitral leaflet. Then one side has a snare and the other had a guide wire, which electrifies and burns through the base. Then after that, it's catched with the snare and then this is pulled through to slice the anterior mitral leaflet. You see that? And then it splits the leaflet straight down the center which is now ready for transcathedral mitral valve repair. Here you can see Dr. Kahn, he's the first author of that procedure. Looking at echo images, you have the placement of the cathedrals, transeptal, and here through the retrograde approach through the aorta. In short, then you have here, you enter a mitral leaflet. You look that your, one, one catheter really is on the anterior mitral leaflet close to your ring. And then you see that here it's electrified to get, get through the anterior mitral leaflet, as you can see it here with the catheter, then it is snared. And after that, see it in a minute, after that, the anterior mitral leaflet is really again, electrifies and split it into. So you see that here now, that in explain, you see two parts of your anterior mitral leaflet. And you can see it also here in the 3D, that the anterior mitral leaflet is now split it away. And you see it after valve implantation, which is nice. And once again, you see the implanted valve here, uh, which is very nice and without LVOT obstruction. Only a few slides with the tendine implantation, which is, as I said, not under, it's still under uh, clinical investigation. You see that valve here with an end anchor part. You have the transeptal, so that is the patient which I described, the mitral regurg. Then you see again the transapical approach with the device here in the mitral annulus area. You see it here coming up there. Then the delivery catheter where the valve here is introduced and then slowly deployed as you can see it here. And after that, you have the final result with the tendine valve here, very well placed without any regurgitation. So I come to my conclusions that beating heart interventions are image guided procedures which is almost a combination of fluoro and TE. And you see that here, that in our OR, we have the fluoroscopy monitor extra for the echocardiography, so means for us, so that you see the echo image and you can see also the device.
And for success, a good heart gene with a skilled echocardiographer and a high-end ultrasound machine is needed. Thank you very much for your intention, attention. And I wanna invite you to see you in person or virtually at the Leipzig Perioperative TE Masterclass meeting, which will be held next year, 20 to 22nd of June. Thank you so much.